Breaker Boys fans, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm Simon Preston, and we have a special guest with us. Good morning, national player Errol Stevens. General, how are you doing? All is well? Yeah, man. Good morning, Simon. All is well. Good morning to your viewers as well. Yeah, man. Good to hear from you, man. Good to hear from you. I hope the family is all right as well. The kids and wife are all right. Yeah, man. Everybody's doing well, bro. Give God thanks, you know? Yeah, man. Good to hear from you, man, and everything. I mean, I know we've talked in the past about, you know, being on the island and, you know, settling in. Does it feel like home for your kids and wife as yet, you know, being on the island and everything? Uh, I think I think no. It, 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 it's definitely feeling like home. Uh, we've been back now, what, almost four years. Uh, the kids are settling well in school, finally. I uh, <laughs> had to make a big shift, as you know, they were in Vietnam learning Vietnamese, so coming home and and catching the language, which is, you know, was a, was, a, was, a, was, a, was a bit of a difficulty for them in the beginning, but they're doing yeah. better now. And the wife seems as if this is is really home. I think she moved from where she was born to, to home now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially like the kids, you know, with English and Patwa. It takes time for them to understand, you know, especially being their own peers and your family members and all of that. You know, it, it took a while because, as I said, Pato is different from English and and then Vietnamese and plus learning Russian. <laughs> yeah, especially the older one. Uh, but to be honest, it, it it's a big advantage for him because just to be home with him and see him talking to his mom, he'll talk in Russian. And then I will call him and he will come talk to me in English and chip in like a Pato here and there. And him just versatile with the languages that it's really, I, I think it's a blessing for him that he doesn't know as yet. Okay. Yeah. All right. that sounds good. Everything in time, as I say, in life is time. So time. that's good. I mean, before we talk about, like, you know, the videos that you've been doing on your channel and, you know, because people have been talking about and the views have been going up, I just wanted to know from you, do you, and Jamaican fans have been asking as well, people have been asking, do you still want to play perhaps another year or two of football or, you know, I hate that for you, really? Uh, to be honest, um. To be totally honest, I, I, I did an MRI um, probably a month ago and found out that I have a, what do you call it, a runner's knee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've been working on it, doing some therapy and stuff like that. Honestly, I don't want to stop playing, but that was the biggest issue I was having. And I kind of get it out the way, but you have to understand that even, even the three years have passed, now I'm 35, I'm 30, no, I'm 36, me <laughs> coming. So to be honest, the age is against me in terms of getting back out there. But I do have a connection with my old club, the same one that I took to FIFA. Mm. Yeah, they've been sending me some positive because they just can't seem to find a striker who can score goals. And it kind of seems like, like it can happen, but it's going to take a lot of things to fall into place for it to happen. And outside of that here locally, bro, it's, to be honest, it's difficult, especially the financial side of it. Is uh, To be honest, it's almost like just the expenses of getting the training the time I would be giving up, it it would be almost like I would be playing for free. To be honest, because you know the clubs are not in the financial position with COVID and even before COVID. It's like the money where I get would I only go back into bills and there would be no plus side it. You get what I mean? Yeah, I understand what you mean. I you know speaking about bills, you know, you, you did an excellent video recently about Jamaican footballers, why they go broke and those things. But honestly though, when you were playing locally though, Earl, Harborview, Arnett, etc., how you manage with 50, getting 50,000 Jamaican a month or 60,000 Jamaican a month? How most ballers do it on the island, honestly? Because it, it's tough. You got supermarket two time and money done. Money yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, well, to be honest with you, if you if, if I should think back, like you just mentioned supermarket, uh, I couldn't go to the supermarket. Uh, and and I think most ballers. As I say, either we come from Garrison or we come from a very poor background. So we don't use the supermarket. We used to, you get up in the morning and mommy tell her where she can cook and you go to the shop and you buy where she can cook, where there's a canned beef, where there's a beet bean and sawfish, where there's them little basic stuff there. Yeah. I saw ball. We can't, because like I said, the highest salary I ever received in a Jamaica was 45,000 Jamaican. And that was at Arnett Garden, 2011. And that's per month. And that's per month. And bro, the money never on time. It has, it's never, no matter, no matter which club, to be honest, if I'm being honest, the only club I've ever been to where the money was on time was at Arborview. But outside of that, all the other clubs, them gear 20, 
and you wait three weeks for the next 25. And there's no peer cycle, there's no period cycle in Jamaican fo- for Jamaican footballers. For, for me, luckily, I, I could have, most ballers would have told us that Errol would have come to train in him, you know, tie on him thing because, you know, we used to work as an accountant with my dad, so we would have another salary. So, so the football thing for me wasn't an income. Mainly, it's because I love ball. I'm just they have a dream to go pro. But if, if you say how oh, most baller do it, yeah. example, Tivoli baller, then most of them come from Tivoli. You might have one and two man from outer port, and them man they're gonna miss training a couple of times for the week. Or if PA they come and them not get PA, them now come no more training till them get PA. And same thing, Alba V used to send bus to pick up them players, so the traveling covered no matter where them live. Port more do the same thing, even now. I think them still have the coaster boss for them pick up the players them. So some teams try, they know the players them can't survive on the salary, so they find ways to support them for cut down the expense. But realistically, bro, like I said, we don't have a professional football environment here, we, not even semi-pro. We just have what we have is schoolboy, and you leave schoolboy football and you go play for a Premier League team, and you, and, and you struggle your way through, and hope say you can't make it. But yeah. It drove, it drove, it drove, it drove. It really is. And, and think about that. You know, you were working at a nine to five. Not everybody have that. And you have some youth team, youth players in the team that come in from school. It's difficult, as, as you rightly said. So it, it's it's really challenging. And when you and when people talk about USL or USL, the Bush League and this and that, you're getting paid and you have a, you have a family to feed. So I don't, you know, when people say, why you choose that league or that league, you have to go where the opportunity takes you, you know, or mm-hmm. age. People talk about Asia and this and that, yeah. Yeah, bro. And just to even address the, the, the situation we just mentioned, uh, bringing up USL, to be honest, yes, it, it, it's better than Jamaica, you know. But my issue with the USL is when the players then go USL and then get comfortable in the league. Because, for me, honest with you, I don't, you probably know, too. Most USL players, if they get 2,000 US dollars after tax, it's a miracle. <laughs> yeah. Because first and foremost, uh, the clubs them over there, they don't respect local talent. Yeah. So, cause I went to a trial in 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 Oklahoma FC. Oh yeah, yeah. In the GFC, yeah. Them time they uh Javon Watson did it, Turkle did it, yeah, and yeah. Bushan Brown did it. Yeah. And when I did the trial, and them called me that they, and and this is when I already experienced Asia and Russia already. And when them called me for the meeting about the salary and stuff like that, the guy tell me, I'm tell me two thousand US, and me for pay my own rent. Are a thousand US and then pay the rent. And at the same time, like a couple of days before, is a is a French youth used to come and go training and they might get like twelve thousand. And that was the offer them put to me as a Jamaican. And I was like, dear, and I'm not gonna disclose the man's salary. But you have Jamaican players who tell you say it take them three months to save a thousand dollars in the US. And for me, honestly, like I said, we not think money only, but that's a waste of time. A thousand dollar can't do nothing. After football, what you gotta do? But as I said, because we're there locally, and we think it starts from the agents, then we start carrying the local players them overseas. Because them now set a standard for the local players them with the club. The club them finally say, all right, them there Jamaica, then probably I get a 200 or 300 US dollar. If I give them a $1,000, them now go turn it down. And realistically, most players now go turn it down. <laughs> so, so it's like, while the USL is a good environment in terms of stepping up the profession, Football wise, we think we need to start have representatives who are represent the players them better than what the mother. Because like I said, the representative might theme pack it might all right when you do the transfer, you know. But in terms of the player and theme financial situation, it, it might better, but not the long term, it's gonna haunt him even more. I mean, in terms of solutions though, boss, you know, you look at different corners of the globe, they they try to get owners and, and so on from overseas or get some guys from the, the Middle East or Asia. Is something like that a model that we need locally so that our players can get paid properly? Even if it's 150 Jamaican a month, then can just be on their feet, as I guess. Yeah, I think I, I think we could that, that could be done locally easily. But guess what? I think there's a there's a there's a I, I, I don't know but what I can based from my experience in the sport and what I think the issue I think is with the owners of the club and the and the corporate side of Jamaica. Because, example, if we think what I think that most of the big companies that are in Jamaica should be managing these teams. Like if you'd have a if and, and that is the thing too, how lucrative would it be for them as 
as well in terms of like advertising and stuff like that. But if we could have a Scotia Bank, because you already have the business house football yeah. with most players. Right now, even in you know, my last days, most players would rather play the business house than play the league. As in them, them put the business house before, yeah, because a lot of the players, them, some of them work like you have players who work at Tank, you have players who work out of out Petro Jam, you have players who work for NHT. One mm -hmm. or two players used to work and play ball too as well. And it was the football that got them the job in those companies. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the academic performance because most footballers academically we not do good. So it was your talent and because you can come play for your business house team, them give you extra money or them give you a job. Why we not make these corporate entities manage the teams fully financially then? Uh even if I feel like employ the players them and make them go back to school while playing. And it, it could have been something phased out from school because as you say. Most of the kids, them, and then it's really difficult to say that towards well because if you go JC, George, is Casey, the, the teams that will dominate schoolboy football, I expect if you can read and write, quote unquote. So if it was a full time process, when they left out of these top schools and I got a good paying jobs while being allowed for study as well, then they would have a better pay grade, they could have, have a stable income and could have still put in some work on the football pitch. So that could have kind of been better for everybody, even the players. Because of the money and the problem. Yeah. You know, it's funny though, Earl, when we sit down and watch English Premier League, Arsenal, the player at the Emirates, City, the player at the Etihad, like they, they monetize the stadium. So that's how they can pay the players. You imagine how about you having the NCB mini stadium? You know, little things like that outside yeah. of the box, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think that that is where we need to go, bro. But as I say, no one thing from it from the side of the owners for the clubs, like maybe that I got trouble for them. Uh, bigger plan in terms of selling players and getting the benefit by themselves. You get what I mean? Because yeah, when 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 corporate come in, maybe they want to be the one to gain all the benefits mm. when it comes to that side of things. True. Yeah. So maybe that is weird. Eh? I don't know why that's not happening. But I guess we have proven now, and they might take up the league, Mister. What what's his name again? Chris. Chris Williams. Yeah. Chris Williams. Yeah. And we see. I say a lot of positive. Just the fact that we have more than one sponsor in that league now looks better. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah. Progress, progress. Everything in life takes yeah. you know. Uh, I wonder though, you know, like the experience you had where you spoke about USL and, and everything. If you are a single man, no kids, no wife, if you'd have had the same mindset and approach, you know? If you'd have just yeah. take, take the money and just go. Yeah, know? yeah, that 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 was it too as well. And as I say. Most players who go USL are normally players who don't get the big break yet. So, them not have, no, like I said, no kids, no responsibilities. So, a thousand dollars, I got sound like a lot yeah. compared to. And as I said, if you're not financially educated, you probably think, say, you can survive on this for the rest of your career, but it, it's only so short and with injuries and with a bad season. And mm -hmm. yeah, it come back and haunt the players, them, you know, the, you know, you know, the end. So, yeah. we have to find a better, we have to find a better. And that's why we end up in Asia. Because even when I was at the 2012, I was supposed to go to Philadelphia Unions. Mm. And it, it, it just never makes sense financially. So I choose Asia because it made sense. Okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. mm. But before Asia, the experience in Russia, you know, the first time you're playing abroad, Russian Premier League, <clears throat> 2009. From the first training session, did you feel like you were like a fish out of water, out of place? Going going back to the video you did about the yeah. technical aspect of the game in Jamaica, yeah, yeah. the challenges on the field. Yeah, man, it was definitely a weird, like I said, a fish out of water because uh, when people hear that I went to Russia, they automatically think that I represented the country already, or mm. that I was an outstanding Premier League player at the time. No, you have to understand that era, Stephen, that went to Russia. I, I maybe never played three games in the Red Stripe Premier League. I was an under twenty one player at Arborview. And I, I never represented Jamaica as, as yet. So even just going to the, like I said, the pitches in, in, in Europe and therefore in Jamaica, we used to people passing the ball to you with a certain level of comfort because we used to play on the bad pitches. When I went to Russia, every pass was like a shot. So even just adjusting myself to being used to that kind of quality of pass was a, was a, was a big, that was the first observation I realized. Like I would be in training and a guy passed the ball, me like, yo, I a fly off on my foot and like, People have me as somebody who can control the ball good. And it took me a while to adjust to that and, and vice versa. Even my passing was poor. I remember the coach used to always tell me, 
he used to always say pass the ball harder because like me say in a Jamaica we pass the ball to a team with comfort. Yeah. But in Europe, if you pass a ball and it now certain pace on it. The thing is, the faster you pass the ball, the more time your teammate get on the ball. The quicker the ball reach him, the more time him get. If you pass him a little chuckling ball, then him get closed down quicker. So the pass is so important. Yeah man, mm-hmm. the pass is like a, a whole conversation by itself, based on how you get to play the ball. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I always felt that you had a, a decent first touch, but you said you had to question that as well. So I, I found it very shocking. Would that come down to the, the pitches that you played on or perhaps your adjustment to the new environment and all of that? The pitches, man. It was the pitches first, and because uh, uh, at, at the time, you know, Abbeville, uh, even though Abbeville was a good stadium, but it had a time when, because it's the same pitch road, play the games and the same pitch with train, man, under 21 Premier League. So after a while, it ran down. And in general, in Jamaica, we don't have good pitches. So that I, I used to call my father on the phone and say, Daddy, me used to think me a first touch, but nah, no touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, man. I'm not saying that I don't have one. I just had to adjust so much in yeah. terms of getting used to and also passing the ball better. Yeah, that that, that was a big and it sounds simple, but yeah. If you first touch on hand, yeah, yeah. And in terms of the training sessions you had in Russia. You know, how different were they compared to Jamaica? Was it more ball work, less ball work, more fitness, more gym work in terms of the, the, the changes in, in training sessions for you? Uh, to be honest, it was more ball work. It was more ball work in terms of small games that replicated the big field, but with, with less touches. Like, like I say, it was mainly one and two touches. And even I can remember being there the team, the team was was like every player know that playing out from the back is one or two touches. The coach made that know from early. So I guess so because you do that every day in training. And we used to do some drill like five v five with one free man, and your focus is finding that free player behind at the press every time with two touches at the same time. So just doing trainings like that, like automatic, and most of the time like we couldn't give it back to the same man who gave the ball. So the different variations of these small games allowed us to feel comfortable under pressure. Because just the fact say you have two touch, if your first touch not good, and a 5v5 with just one free man, you're going to lose the ball. You know, say, if you pass the ball, you have to move and support the player because you only have two touches. And as I said, even when I went to the academies, this is what the young players were doing. So guess what? When it comes to match time, there's no pressure because they already feel the pressure in a training. Like, in a Jamaica, when we have a coach come and say two touches, nobody knows how to train. Everybody feels long. Nobody don't want to run because a two touch, you can't get for broke and you can't get for pile of man and you know. But me not gonna blame the Jamaican players as well because we know we not grew in that from we young for enjoy two touch. Like I was in an environment to start enjoy playing two touches. Because see everybody had do it and you could have feel the like quality that you could have seen the ball and move on. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah. And you feel so good way. Even with the two touches, you still can't pile them on the two touches. You still can't come most of the time because all of my press, as I say, me love the freedom of the game. And you know, me love broken, quote yeah. unquote. Yeah, but I still find ways to be creative with two touches. And it grew my game so much that I get so comfortable. But there was no pressure in a football game for me. People watch even before, I never have no pressure. But after it gets so much easier, because as I say, if you do something every day, under the same intensity as the match, the game get easier. And as we say, like, yeah, we know the pitches and we know have and we know we know say we not the right trainings, but as we say, it need to start earlier. And we need to focus on the simple, the simple stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, as you know, it was a loan deal in Russia. You came back, you went to iron it. Uh, coming back locally, did it feel like a transition again? Because you're coming back to the same pitches then where you used to grow up hunting and say, boy, the past is my for change that again after just my style and all of that. Yeah, man, that was a big issue as well coming back. Because like I said, when you're over there and everybody, because I guess well, football is a team sport, uh, me alone can change everything from the pitch every time. But in terms of the team-wise, because you're not on the same environment with the same players with the same mind is like most of the time you don't feel the same it's like it's like you go up here and you come back down and you have to adjust your game back to local you have to start pass back the ball you know what i say you know poor quality but the same way you pass the ball over there you can't come back and Jamaica come pass it because then come back to the bad pitch the same player will tell you say you give the ball too hard because these are terms we use we know you must give them terms that generally my you to give me the ball too hard and no 
overseas, there's not there's not such a thing as giving a pass too hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I just that side as well. Oh, quite a transition. And of course, you we know you made your debut for Jamaica that year, played against Colombia the year after. Maria pass anyone ball, and you give the ball to Jeremy Lynch. Just the national experiences that you had being in that setup with players from England and from the States, etc. Being in that national sort of setup, you know, what was that experience like for you as well? No, man, that was that was I think that was the best feeling for me because, like I said, for years I tried to get into the national program and it never happened. Uh, luckily, like I said, it all started from going to Arnett Gardens and having uh, Coach Tiga as a coach and having him give me so much confidence because like I said going overseas and being known and coming back and being not known is a total different uh yeah. start you have to start over again so having T that was like a blessing the first yeah. coach will just give me the freedom to express myself put confidence in me and I get the call up and then it was the same thing with the national program uh Montes just really allowed me to 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 flourish the few times he called me and he always is in time in time talk to me in training was always like Naldo, you have to do this because yeah. of that you can do, you know. So yeah, man, it was a great great time. And as you see with the game we play against Guyana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Really come on and make a difference and help the team. And it was a proud day. Mm-hmm. And now the experiences that you had in both Thailand and, and Vietnam as well, from the tactical standpoint in training, passing, movement. You, you touched those in the video that you did recently, and I'm asking all the viewers as well to check out the video that Errol did as well regarding, you know, what is not being done in Jamaica. In terms of the high press and, and movement, etc. what were some of the things that you did in Thailand and, and Vietnam that, you know, in Jamaica, we're not doing just yet? Mm, to, like I said, to be honest, we don't have tactical classes in Jamaica. Uh, and let me say, I can only talk from experience. And right. yes, you might. I don't want no coach feel like me. I said they're not coaching good. I no, etc. No. Et et yeah, but we don't have. I I I never get a tactical class in Jamaica. When I went to Thailand, I used to have got training forty five minutes early, just mm-hmm. to sit in with the under seventeen and the under twenty ones, just to understand how the team play because it's a system of play coming from their under eight come right up. So therefore. When a player go up to the under 15, you already know how the under 15 are play because I'm a play like that in the under eight. And not because of only formation, because every time we talk about tactical, we think say if a team are play 4 3 3 means that they can't play 5 3 2 and still be tactically organized. Yeah. It's not the formation. Football not play. I'm not saying football play with formation, but football is more than formation. It's just understand, like I say, there's nothing new on the football pitch. Every day you go up on the field, it's still 11 v 11. It's just how you, the build-up is so important these days. Most, whether, whether, especially being in Asia, Thailand, Vietnam, it was always about the build-up, being tactically sound, moving right, playing with simple touches from the back. Because as I'm saying, in the attacking third is where you get the freedom for do, to express yourself. That's where your talent come to life. Somebody like me will have dribbled in the attacking third. In our build-up phase, it was always one and two touches. Because as I'm saying, if you now move the ball with one and two touches, Good teams are going to press it and take away the ball. And even Thailand was a thing like this where we used to have trainings and when one team of the ball, they can't get it back. Because the teams are so organized that they can move around the ball and no matter how you press, they move it out of the press because they understand. Everybody can realize, all right, a five versus three this. So we don't have to panic. We can just relax and move the ball. And if them send two more men come, that means we have one man free at the next half. And we are so spaced out where we know where the free man is. And this is because everybody do it in a training is because the coach do drills in a training and highlight where the attacking midfielders are behind the press. So when it comes to match time, we already know already. It's not new to me. But as I said, locally, what I found that we would do drills, but we never explain to the players them why we are doing the drill or what are the reason for the drill. It might be the lack of time. It might be, let me say, players now get paid enough, coaches now get paid enough, so the interest not really dear on that level. To go. So, yeah, there, there's many different like things where we can say why it not happened. But at mm-hmm. the same time, like I say, it's not being done. Right? It wasn't done for me. Yeah. yeah. I just wonder, though, if you had an opportunity to, like, meds these thoughts and stuff with, like, Jeremy Lynch and Kevin Bryan, who played with you in Asia as well, and sit down and say, boy, when we're there, you know, this never happened or that never happened. And how they, they felt about it as well, the transition to Asia. 
And yeah, man. Not, and to be honest, not only with those players, even play. I remember just the other day, a couple months ago, I talked to Sharkman, Richard Edwards. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. he played in the game with Jamaica play, uh, Vietnam, in Vietnam. I think I don't know, it was 09 or one of those years. Yeah, and then yeah. the tree love. Simon, for me in general, when people hear some play Vietnam, they consider it as a non league. Vietnam, because Vietnam and Europe, Vietnam and yeah. Europe. Yeah, but Vietnam school, the national team, three love. I want to talk to Sharkman. Sharkman said, the f- Sharkman, you tell us. He said, the first when I play football, he said, players I make pass from midfield, from defense to striker, pan the ground, fly pass him when he can't see. Ball is a knock. Sharkman said, the first he run so much, and the first ball knock to him is. That's, I mean, I quote him. Because in Asia, the players are so tactically and so technically good with the ball that. It's just, it just difficult, bro. Playing in Vietnam is one of the most difficult league mm-hmm. compared to even playing in Russia. Because like I said, sometimes playing against somebody your size is much easier than playing against short and more quicker people. And if you realise, you know, uh, the game speak, we play Japan, we get nine love. We play Japan, we get five. And and no, 98, we could have match up with Japan, we beat them at the World Cup. I don't think Jamaica have a team to even play Japan. And the team we will play, we will play Japan one at a time. It was like Japan C team. Because them A team couldn't come play because they had players playing all over. I don't know if too much we will play them down in Japan. I will lose like three. Mm-hmm. But no, but I, I don't think we're on any level to play any of those Asian teams. No, because as I said, these countries are developing from the grassroots up, and we just keep trying doing one thing. We, we we have different different players every game, and then the World Cup time come and. We don't know who for use, and we just call up our English players and we drop this set of players. And so, yeah, we, we, we are going about it with a short term mentality. It, it's almost like building wealth. Everybody wants a quick, the quick way to do it. But yeah, let me just, yeah, let me make it clear for the viewers as well that Errol doesn't have any problem as well with any English player. Naira Nasworth and Maria are two of his big friends. Yeah, so man. Errol have no problem with them being involved. I guess the timing of them coming late and making debut in the program. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so I, I, I love how you're, 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 you're sipping that because I like because like I I, I, I I will say that when I make a video because we have more time to talk. But like I said, bro, the English players to our program is a plus. It's not a minus. So I can come out and say that. So I don't want anybody to feel like me. I say and like I say, these are friends of mine. So there's no when I talk. That's why I can talk so freely because even if they're watching right now, they would understand because we have these conversations. Yeah, bro, it's not. It's just the way how we go about it. Like every time we have an every couple friendly game is a different eleven. There's no chemistry. There's no you can have a core team and they filter in everybody or try to get the players way earlier. This 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 World Cup camp- campaign. How much players have made them debut during the World Cup campaign? And like I said, if these players never want to come from from before, then don't bring them. But you can't want to bring everybody during the campaign. I'm gonna make him debut in the campaign. You know, yeah. matter where you play in the world, a debut is a debut. Okay, you go come and you go have teammates we don't know at all. You never play with them before. And you go play against teams like Panama, where I grew where I groomed them players from uh from Mexico. These countries bro, it just don't make sense in our football. In our real yeah. football, really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel the I can hear the frustration in you and, and a lot of people asking, you know, the next step for you. Will it be Coaching will it be analysis, commentary? You know what the next step for you or your career? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank God for YouTube. We can kind of be an analysis like you. Would <laughs> you know, I always look up to you, bro. I mean, I was like, yeah, man. From the days we see at work on CV and stuff like that, I, mean, I always admire as a young man. Your knowledge is is, is sound, you know. So yeah, when it comes to coaching, like I said, I'm coaching. So I'm coaching my boys with with some other kids now, and sometimes the time. And if I'm willing to step out there as a coach, and I say, who knows? But I don't close any door on it. But I, I, I do hope that I could help give back, even in terms of information. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you, you also built good relationships over in, in Vietnam as well. So I wonder if, if they call you or check up on you or WhatsApp, if you say, how are you doing, Errol? All is well. You're going to come back and, and give you a link, anything like that? Yeah, man, like I said, I have, like I said, I, I, I've took players to Vietnam and trial before. I introduce players to different agents, not only in Vietnam. I introduce, right now I have a, a great connection with a farmer teammate in Holland. And I introduced him to this boy, Tyree McGee, at one <laughs> point. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. So, we, we do make 
little links here and there with the players then when it possible, you know? Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's very interesting. And you get to still keep in touch with the Jamaicans that are there over in Vietnam and, and Asia as a whole, Siobhan Walsh and Romario Gordon. You get to keep in touch with any of them? Yeah, man. Like I, like I said, those, those two names we call, uh, uh, two names we call, uh, we call mentor, <laughs> both <laughs> football and, and finances. Because as I said, bro, yeah, man, like I think I've been experienced when we can pass on to them to make it easier for them. Because like I said, I always wish I had that when I was playing. Whether on the field or off the field. So that's what I focus on these days. Like try counsel them. And this is at no charge. Cause like I said, I, I don't I don't take any money from football players to, to help them. And at the same time, it's not like I'm telling them what, what to do with their money. You know, it's just conversations like, bro, you can't do this. And this is how I feel, but he's a big man himself, so you can do. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, man. All right, that, that makes sense. And the journey as well on YouTube for you as well with wifey and with kids, how that has been going along? Because I know editing and, and recording content, they take time, energy and strength, you know? Yeah, bro, it take a lot, believe me. And like I said, all, all of that was just uh, span oh, it's spontaneous. Yes, in the beginning, we started recording while we were in Vietnam because I said, hey, the kids and the memories, but just the love we received. Yeah. yeah. And, and trying to keep up with the demand. Because as soon as you take a week off or a 10 day off, somebody message and say, hey, I'm going to a video. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, man. So as much as we record a lot, I also have moments that we don't record. So a lot of times people think that everything that they see on the YouTube is the own. Like I just walk up with a black stick every single day. And no, uh, we do have things that we don't show. Like I, I try my best not to show family members that are not around me constantly because... I just I just feel more comfortable with who I can protect right within my <laughs> realm. Yeah, so it, that's why my content that's why I think my content is kind of limited because I don't show every single where I go and who I spend time with every single day. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. But but I love it. To be honest, I love it. It's a it's a good. Sometimes I sit back and I watch some videos that we make two years ago and see the kids doing. Yeah, you know. So. Yeah. It's, Okay, yeah, that's good. And I mean, we all deserve privacy as well, so we can understand that as well. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That. And in terms of the one of the newest videos you did about Shafer and Tapa, what were your experiences like with both? Because Shafer came in with a huge reputation, mm -hmm. a team with African Cup of Nations and go confed final and them thing. There. Your experience working with him, even though it was like a brief one in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, uh, I went to play the game against South Korea with him, and like you said. He's win for Shea for you hear about him for years as a baller, you know who this guy is. So, you know, when I went around him for the time and the training sessions he did, the conversations he had, like I said, to be honest, it wasn't much of a different from a Montes or from a Tapa. And then even not being around him and seeing seeing him in the program, he would have faced the same roadblocks that Tapa would have faced or Montes would have faced. He would just get a group of players a couple of days before the game. And there is no, unless, I don't, I think, unless you're Pep Guardiola, and I don't think even Pep could, I don't know what Pep could do with, with some players four days before a game in terms of coaching, quote unquote, tactically and stuff like that. Yes, he can, he can tell you how to play as a team, but he can't go out to play for you and he can't put everything that he knows in your brain in, in three to four days. So I think that's where I see where we think like if it's top or coach the team, the team is weaker than when a Schaefer coach the team. No, we went down to South Korea. We still got three. And the South Koreans still outplayed us. Just as all when I was playing with Tapa and we played Colombia. And they outplayed us. So, as I say, we keep trying to find short-term solutions. Mm -hmm. And getting a, get, getting, getting a high-paid coach does mean you have to coach more money for deal with the same problems. Mm -hmm. And you now fix the problem. You now fix the root of the problem. Right. But a lot of people might not remember the Columbia game. You didn't play in your natural position per se. I just wanted to know how you took that, you know, playing on the right and, and everything like that. Did Tapa say, boy, I needed to do a job for me or, or anything like that? Yeah, I think being that it was my debut, mm -hmm. that is the thing, you know. Being that it was my debut, uh, you would have more senior players than you. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so you're playing a position that, to be honest, I was just glad to be. On the field. <laughs> on the field. <laughs> to be in the starting level. Yeah. Because, like I said, 
you, you had players on the bench who were more experienced. You had players on the bench who were playing in England yeah. and playing everywhere. So I was so glad that the coach could have seen and have faith in him to say, yeah, I'm going to start, Errol. And it was a joy because even after the game, everybody said I did well. And even me know I did well. So, yeah, it was really a really special moment. Trust me, putting on that national team colour is the best experience. <laughs> yeah, and, and as you said, representing your country is one of the best experiences. For you, what has been some of the highlights that you had so far of your career, club and international-wise, you know, because you played overseas, not many they get to do that. What were some of the moments that stand out for you, in a sense? All right. The, 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 the first standout would, would have been the first game I played in Russia. Uh, I was, I'm a big, 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 big Brazilian fan. I mean, I said big, I mean, yeah, yeah, number one. And I was in, my first game I actually started and I was in the tunnel with Wagner Love and Zico. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And like, you have to understand that the thing about it now, what made it special, like I said, I never represented the country before. And, and, and just three, maybe two months before that, I would be, my journey would be, Going to work in the morning, uh, take a bus, go to Crossroad, walk from Crossroad, go for all of road, and then go back downtown and take a bus, go to Arborview. And it was just like a simple Jamaican lifestyle compared to now, out of the blues, two, three months after my dinner, the tunnel with Zico and Wagner Love. And like just the environment at that time was like breath, like it was, I can't sum it into words. Just to, it's like I, I, I would be sitting at home watching Wagner Love playing for Brazil. Yeah, yeah. And then you end up in a tunnel with him. I go up on the same field with him. And there were so many other good players. Milos Krasic who played for Serbia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I even get to play against Jan Kola. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. And I, yeah, my second game was against Zenit St. Petersburg. So I get to play against the two biggest clubs in, in Russia at the time. And probably still now. Yeah. So yeah. outside of all of what happened in Russia, it was really. Something to remember. Mm-hmm. Have you had a chance to to talk to Bowser about you know preparing for life in Russia yet, or any advice you would give him? Because you and I talk about it as well. Because you, Damani, Ralph, Robert, Scarlett played in Russia just to prepare him for what lies ahead. Because Russia, cool and normal. It's not like England, cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And to be honest, no, I never get to, you know. So to be honest, I've never spoken to him personally because like we never end up in the same. We never get a call together because, as you know, the age difference. Yeah. Yeah. But even just watching now, I think I'm not saying the cold because, like I said, he was in Europe yeah. already. Yeah, yeah. He was in Belgium. He's in Europe already. So, and he's been there quite a while. And I watch a lot of his games because I watch football all year long. Yeah. And he's doing well. Good, good striker, scoring goals. So I don't think there will be most much adjustment you would need to make. To playing in Russia compared to because to be honest to you, I think Belgium is stronger than Russia. Oh wow. Well. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's yeah, I, I think on the on the tactical side and the football side, I think Belgium is a bigger football nation. So mm-hmm. this might be I'm not saying it's gonna be a walk in the park because every country got the football style is different, the demand is different. So but he, he he'll be all right. And, and I saw his friendly game he just score a goal. So mm-hmm. he's doing all right. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, that sounds good. And I guess, you know, in terms of the viewership, the Russian league, it gets a lot of views. He's going to be playing Europe League as well, so a lot of eyes are going to be on him. I'll be on him, yeah, 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 yeah. So that is the thing. Oh, so he wasn't playing Europa League in his team in, in Belgium? He, they had qualified, but it was like the playoff round and thing, but now he's round at 32, so I see your Oh, yes, yeah, so I see your business, serious business. Yeah, man, the call, in we adjust to that, man. Like I said, the call is not, trust me, Russian call is not like any other call. But yeah. definitely... He will adjust to that because that is just a thing where after United, after a while. And, and seeing Russia now, I think they must have the facilities to, to, he'll be training in probably indoors if it's snowing really bad. And mm-hmm. yeah, so it shouldn't be. And like I said, even from the racist side, that's, that's tough. I don't think it, it's as bad now as when I was there because mm-hmm. of social media and yeah. all of these uh, no racism groups we have and the different groups we have now. Kind of help things. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, yeah. And as you said, he's at a club that is kind of diverse with Brazilians and so on. Yes. Yes. Mixed yes. race people. Mixed race people. Yeah. So when I went to Russia, I was the only black man in my team. Wow. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and, 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 and I mean, the only other 
players we had that weren't Russians was a Jewish Russian, mm -hmm. and we had a French player and a Serbian player. Those were the only foreign players. So, okay. yeah, total different times, I think. Okay. What was that, that experience like for you when you're in Asia? Was it the same prejudice or it was just, they would just look at you for five seconds and turn them head in a sense? Yeah, man. Uh, no, in, like, bro, Vietnam is one of the most peaceful countries I've been to. Like I say, it's just the norm for Vietnam you see and them say then, 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 then. Then mean black. And it's like, yeah. I think because black people are so rare, it's more like, then we just see you and come take picture. They want to take picture with you just because you're a black man and never see a black person before. Mm -hmm. But I never fe felt like racially abused. Yes, mm -hmm. it gets annoying after a while for every day. Because I, like I said, I lived in Vietnam five years. Uh, we were renting, we had a own a home. So we we're living just like here in Jamaica, going out in the streets. And I used to pass like on the main road and the same people them will see you from last year, them see you this year, and them still go and like, say the first time I see you. <laughs> <laughs> but most of the time, I just show them friends so they know a black person, so they want to say hello because mm -hmm. I was kind of catching on the, on the language and stuff. But yeah, Vietnam is very nice and peaceful, man. Just yeah. yeah. How about like for kids when, when they grow up? You, you, have you thought about like how you're going to break down, you know, things like this whole life is going to be? You know, what they may face when they grow up, little things like that. You talk to wifey about what challenges might arise for them if they, when they grow up and things like that. Yeah, good question. Uh, to be honest, the wife just go back to Russia. I'm always against them going to Russia, if I'm being totally honest. Yeah. And, and, and the wife knows that. And she knows as well. As I said, she went back with Lionel, the older one, this mm -hmm. summer. And she said she's not going back with him. Oh. Yeah, because she get it. And, 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 and he get it. Like, people look on him different. Kids tell him that, ask him why he looks so, and they might make them look a joke, and you know, and even at one point, if a race up one man, more the same issue. So, he's a good looking kid, come on, yeah, he's a good looking kid, but in his country, he's not he's not pure white, so oh, him get and he even he, him come back. And, and like I, I told her before, and you know, when you know, when you need to experience something. So in the relationship, I wasn't like calling her down. I said, no, no, Leah can't go Russia because whatever. I said, all right, go on with him. And you will see. And now she's like, all right. And I tell her, because when you're young, you know, I don't want that, like, affect him. Like, I was old and it affected me somewhat. So I don't want him to grow up and feel like him less than anybody else. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he's a lovely kid. So that's the thing about Jamaica, like, the diversity that we have here. And we don't want to see color. And... and, and you know, outside of the classism <laughs> that, yeah. that, that that is here. And I, and I, and I, and I don't even want to say we don't want to call it Jamaica. But Jamaica is just a, a diverse country where, and on the plus side, we're not we're not trying to kill each other because we look different. Right. True. Yeah. Yeah. And for your two boys, you know, just out of curiosity, uh, in the future, you know, if football is something that they're progressing well in, would you get a Jamaican passport for both of them? They already have the Jamaican passport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, man. They have the Jamaican passport and they have the Russian. They have both passports right now. All right. Yeah, yeah. man. So, who knows? Like <laughs> I said, it, yeah, it's up to them and they're showing good signs already. Yeah. yeah man, but you never know. Yeah, because I think you posted a video two years ago and um, Leo with the left foot, left foot, left foot, left foot. Mm -hmm. Not many people can persist with that left foot, you know? No, so. man. And I posted a video just this morning because, like I said, I trained the kids. I, train, I have like 10 kids that I train now. Eight or 10. Some depends on the weeks. And they're playing like a scrimmage games. And this weekend he scored four. And 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 Minata, like, no, walking at the park goes. He's, he's, he's doing well. And he seems to love it because he's not always going to kick everything. And... <laughs> but he's not being forced. It's just that that's how we spend time together. I use it as a time to like father and son and, you know. Yeah, and like I said, football teach more than just football. A lot of discipline and teamwork, and so mm -hmm. he's meeting yeah. friends, he's socializing. <laughs> you see more confident now because you know interact with other kids, and you know, so it's okay. good. All right, that's good. There was a question in the comments I want to to raise for you. It's something you mentioned on on GPS with Wayne a couple of years ago on CPM when you're in Russia, mm -hmm. yeah, in a supermarket. People just want to know some of the. The, the hardships you had to overcome in Russia. I'm not sure if you remember that story. You're in a supermarket and some people were approaching you. Yeah, sure you yeah, man. yeah, man. It was, I went to the supermarket. It wasn't far from the team hotel. Like, yeah. like, like, like what Americans would call a corner store. 
up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I went to buy some groceries. And when I was coming out, as soon as I push the door open, like I see a fist swing across the door. And but yeah. the door is the door actually keep it from don't catch me. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we come out like three guys, them bag of Russian talking, and then run me down, drop grocery, <laughs> drop grocery. I run a, a good block, run straight back at the hotel. And when we go to the hotel, like when 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 them say surprise and traumatize all in one, that was yeah. because you know foreign country you know, speak the language. Even when it happened, I'm going yeah. to the hotel. There was nobody at the time for me explain to them what happened. Them just me run at the hotel. We never know if I communicate with anybody if you tell them. Oh, man, like just go up to the room. I'm just did it, did it, did it, and then like after I'm kind of cool them like and I made me a YouTube racism in Russia. Yeah. As just the way them talk, and as I say, even playing games, people used to spit out from people used to throw banana for me when we play, but it never get physical at the games. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, when that happened, it was like, whoa. And like me YouTube other videos I'm find. Even right now, if you YouTube the videos, you find them. And even now it's still um where them attack African students or them attack people of different races. Where then even in Russia, most of them tell you don't go to metro, never go to metro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. So it's a, it's really a, 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 a tough. It was a tough. As I said, when I come back to Jamaica, I didn't want to play anymore football. Even my parents would tell you that. I just wanted to work as a, with my dad. And, and but after a while, now I say, oh, nine to five, we're never me this far. So it's like like to be honest, when you play football and you kind of touch certain money, you can't go back to. Yeah. It's a regular job. So yeah, man. It was really tough. It was a Tough, tough, tough time. And even with my wife, when we have conversations now. Yeah. <laughs> they make you stronger, I tell you. They've made it. No, to def- that definitely made me a stronger individual. Because like I said, when I, when, I, when I came back home, any any friend that I have, I grew up with. Them yeah. can tell you, say, in our community, I'll meet a preach and still a preach I love. Yeah. Because even when I come back home, I come back home, all of my friends, them, who I grew up with, are friends, I kill our friends. Mm-hmm. And we used to say, yo, you know, because guess what? All of this is kind of a subconscious thing here, yeah, I think. But when I say, yo, you go out into the world, they want, it's like black man are the biggest target. And you come home, and still your brother, your fair run from seeing you. So we used to find it, say, yo, it's, it's almost like we are help other races get, not other, I guess when we used to say other races, I it seems like it's like a big thing against all oh, the killer for black people. But we just have, just a support that cause in general because you know, most of the stuff them people are dead from Jamaica sometimes it don't make sense. And sometimes yeah. you just take a little conversation and for squash, but everything nowadays are just gone. And yeah, yeah, man, we're culture, we're culture around though. Uh, oh boy, I tell you. I was always curious though, Earl, you know, after that loan spell in, in Russia, did they say to you, We'd love to have you back next season on loan again? Or how people said, Come, no, bro, I left. <laughs> bro, I, I tell people every day. I left two months salary in Russia. Two months salary. Yeah. And if I tell them a salary, you yeah. never believe me that I left it. But I not going to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> we can't tell them about the year. We can't tell them half the year. But bro, I left, left, left two months salary in Russia. As I said, after the incident, the only thing I could do because as the agent, there was an agent in named Bebich. And in there another guy. In the actually the other in, in representative they come a harbor we want them as court player after sh- uh, shortly after me and Akim Boogie that Akim Bruce okay you know say Boogie came me go over Russia. So after yeah. the man signed me, we never hear from him yet. Yeah. As we mean when we sign the contract and him getting money, he disappeared. So when all of the struggles reached me, we have nobody for call. There was only a translator, this African guy who used to study in a university of Russia. Yeah. He was the translator between me and Babich because Babich couldn't speak English neither. And when time that happened to me, all me do, I buy a ticket. Because so I never get no support. I never have nobody to talk to, whether in the club or nothing. And me never take the chance to walk up and down. Because that, that, that was the thing. When we used to go training, we used to have literally either, we used to have a, the guy who said he was a Jewish Russian. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He used to pick me up some days and carry me to training. And the days then when he picked me up, he take the bus. Walk got the bus stop, take the bus. I mean, because we used to just know where the training is. And the first couple of times, some of the under 21 players will go with them, and after that, will go by myself. So I'm out in Russia like a, like, a sitting, like, like, like a sitting duck. So when that happened, we just literally link him, give him the money, buy a ticket, and come back to the yard. 
<laughs> and like in my mind, I say, oh, I'm gonna wait and like get the rest of the money, but I say, nah, can we even leave to get the rest of it? <laughs> yeah, but as you know, your experience, you know, can inspire others. And but if a next Jamaican from from the Premier League or overseas got an opportunity in Russia, you know, I gotta tell him no. You gotta tell him to go go and try. Yeah, and don't no mean say it, I gotta be the same. Like, yeah, as I say, my the way how we when we say we mean me and Boogie, you know, how we went to Russia was a different way. Compared to how Shama and Nikosina go to Russia now. Because mm-hmm. he left out a professional European club with the right support in terms of agent, somebody we probably can relate to. We were just leaving. I, when I left Jamaica, I never knew the agent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only person I know are Akeem Priest, the boogie, and, and he met the agent through another connection. And So when this guy signed us, he never felt obligated to support me in a no way. He just get him money and he just go. And it's not like you could have turned to him. And I'm sure Shaman in a not environment like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's different times. I don't say back in those days, it was hard to find an agent, find, hard to find anybody to represent you. And yeah, compared to now, I think the players know they have everything easier. Social media, they can build profiles, they can send out videos, they can be seen easier. Yeah, back in the days, if somebody never come and have a view, you can watch you with them eye, you can't yeah. be seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we're going to wrap up this interview quite shortly. Just a question from one of the fans. What's your assessment of the local league, the Jamaica Premier League, having played in several other leagues? Uh, what should we adapt locally? Having played in Jamaica, you play Russia and Asia. You know, you, have you seen some of the games that play up of you? Yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing, to be honest, you know, the games actually easier for watch now based on the fact that they're playing up at UE because of the surface more level. But I played up there and it's not good. In terms of what what it's doing to the players, then in terms of them foot and stuff like that, kind of get really hot. But we need better services in Jamaica. We need the players them fair train and better services. That is number one. As I say, if you brought any team from overseas to play here, I, I remember when I played with the Harbour at Concacaf Champions League. Uh, Pumas. Yeah, yeah, the Mexican side, yeah, man. Side. You remember the first leg didn't play, right? The first leg didn't play because Pumas oh, yeah. come. And then walk yeah. on Arborview football stadium and them say they now play on the field. Yeah, I will go there and get four. I will go there. I think at three, yeah, three or four. Three, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they didn't play the first leg because them said they now play on the field. Mm-hmm. And during those times, Arborview had a better stadium compared to most local stadiums. You couldn't bring a Chelsea, a Man U, a, a Arsenal, or any of those clubs come play on any local pitch because the player them wouldn't go on it because no football can play on that. So we are playing on, on something that no professional in their right mind. And 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 Messi couldn't be Messi and <laughs> and in their own. <laughs> so as we say in, in in terms of we like fine tuning our skills and developing the right way in terms of the basics, you need good pitches to do it pan. You need good pitches to pass the ball pan, good pitches for control pan, good pitches to shoot pan. Yeah man. So as we say we keep trying to skip out the basics, and that are the problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, Errol, I really, really appreciate your time, you know, just to talk to me, you know, before we're up on and everything like that, you know, just your thoughts about the future in terms of the, the talent we have on the island and everything like that in terms for the future. You, you, you're confident about what we have, you know, if we implement, you know, some of the ideas you had about movement and the tactical aspect. But the talent here is endless, you know? Yeah, bro, like I said, the talent here is endless. Uh, to be honest, if we could send our best 500 talented players on the island go down to Brazil, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, any country, even America, just send them to some academy from early, if mm-hmm. we can't do it here. Sign some agreements in some of these clubs, like we see USA, though. Just, right. just ship out a whole generation of players into Europe. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and look at them now. All of them playing at some of the best clubs. From Chelsea to Dortmund to Barca to Juventus. So these are not things we may make up. These are just facts. And like I said, if, if you even realize, like Jamaica will do better in the under 15, 17, 20 when it comes to playing against these bigger countries. We do a little bit better. But as soon as after that, you know why? Because the development stops. Development stops because during the during the during the, the lower age groups with ten feet, 
have more talent there and talent speaks for itself up to only so much. Mm-hmm. But then now our players then they, 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 they don't keep developing and then it just end up being stagnant. <laughs> yeah, I understand what you mean. But yeah, when Leo turns 12, let us all know and we'll get him in the under 15s, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, he has to work for it though. We don't want him because uh, his daddy. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm yeah, pushing man. him. I'm pushing him. Uh, everything in due time, you know. Yeah, man, Earl, much appreciated. Appreciate it, your, your time. And uh, just before you go as well, um, what's the name of your YouTube channel so people can subscribe to your content and stay tuned with everything happening on your side? Yeah, man, I appreciate it. So there's a family channel called Life with the Stevens. And my personal channel is Earl Stevens. We attend to talk about more football. So I just anything that comes to mind sometimes. <laughs> now, positive light. And sometimes showing the kids at training and stuff like that. Yeah, and do watch the videos, people, because Earl gives some good advice as well, especially if you're in a relationship and how to treat your significant other. And, yeah, and finances and stuff like that. And yeah, we just try to share the experience as we as we learn it and as we go along. I, I, I tell you, I think as a community, we need to share so we can help each other grow. And I, I, and I am still open to learning as well. Yeah, absolutely. Again, appreciate your time, bro, and we'll be in touch like always. Should be in your neck of the woods soon, but we'll talk. We'll yeah, talk. bro, come, come link up and we could do something live. Yeah, <laughs> we need you here. Yeah, man, for real. Yeah, man, the highway, you know, not so far. But yeah, man, we'll talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, bro. yeah, man, cool, cool. There we go, guys. Errol Stevens with us today. Thank you so much again for tuning in to a special interview. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to Reggae Boys Commentary for more content. Stay in touch, and we will...